I know the way he's speaking with me right now. There's a sense of urgency, speed. He wants things to be done fast. Every time he's showing me, today again in the night, again this night, in the sky again, he drew again the map of America, North America. And he showed me this side. And then he said, look, the plane is taking up there. Tell them, go tell them. He is in so much hurry. If he wanted, he would have just, you know, shut down all these things and just, that's it, you know. You go to other countries. Time has run out. Again today, twice in the night, by the way, he drew them up. I could see it in the sky. Then he said, look, 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 look. Over there now. That's where the message should go. Because Kenya is eating all the time. It is time for other nations to eat, right? It is time for other nations to eat. It's time for other nations to eat. But listen to this. In Revelation chapter 19, this is a popular scripture. I've read it again and again. Verse 7, it says, Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the Lamb has come. That is the glory that Isaiah saw bringing joy. You see that? And he says, and his bride has made herself ready. Verse 8, fine linen, bright and clean was given her to wear. And my version says, fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Now if you look at that fine linen, and then verse 9 he says, Then the angel said to me, write, blessed are those who are invited into the wedding supper of the Lamb of God. And he added, these are the true words of God. That is the wedding of the Lamb of God. But when you just turn on the same page, I don't know how you were on the same page, same chapter, just move forward from verse 11 on, talk about the second coming of the Lord. He says, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse. You remember the white horse he showed me the wedding rings? Again, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called faithful and true. With justice he judges and makes war. With, again, he says, his eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. There is even a worship song that says, he is crowned with many crowns. You see that? You see that? The darling of heaven crucified. You see that? He says, he has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood. The symbol of... Hallelujah. Let me share a little bit deeper here today. The first time the Lord Jesus appeared to me in the sky on that May 17, 2004 when he appeared. Remember during the calling he appeared but in the tremendous glory and then he touched me with the left hand. We've shared about those things. They're not new anymore here. I've shared that the church may grow and know that the Lord has done a new move, you see. But I'm talking about this visitation, talking about the rapture, when he showed me how he's going to take the church. When his hands were significantly bigger and he pulled them, you know. By the way, it's the glory that pulls them from the tombs, that transforms you and takes you. That's why that morning dew is very critical. I want to talk about that morning dew a little bit. Someone remind me not to forget. That morning dew is the river that flows from the throne of God, from the temple of God in heaven, and it flows the four ends of the earth, empowering the four glorious horses that I saw, which, stand, which stood for the four white, the glorious gospels that were to purge up, to clean up the four ends of the earth. You see that? The four glorious gospels are the ones going to clean up the church. Do you hear me? Once you anchor yourself on the four glorious gospels, then you can take the whole Bible. You see that? You see that somebody? And the glorious gospels are glorious. So they will bring radiance with the morning dew flowing from the throne of God. The life-giving spirit of God that can give life to their sleep, the dead. That they too may resurrect. You see that? We'll talk about that river. The river of life. And why Isaiah saw the morning dew and also Daniel saw, I've seen it. So the thing is this. But here, what I want to emphasize to you on the rapture, the door to rapture, is that on that 17th of May, when he first appeared to me from the sky, he has a red cloth 
that runs from his left shoulder. We can, uh, you want to be mature, of course. Eh? Let's all be mature. He has a red cloth that runs from his left shoulder like this, down here. Red, 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 red. And you can imagine when it's red within the glory of the Lord. Let the church mature. I need to share. It's time to share these things now. The deep things about the person of Christ. You've lived on rumors for a long time, right? It's time to live on the truth. It is time for the church to live on the true word and the revelation of God. This is the same red cloth. Even when the hand came to touch me, the glory is tremendous. But you could see where it was punched. You see? The nail. So that's the first one. That's the first thing he does. When, when he was sure that I focused on him in that vision, then he lifted the hand like this. Then look what I did for you. You see that? He is so satisfied that he did it. But the problem is this. He was so much abused. He was carrying a cross that would deliver you, the church. They beat him like a dog until he fell down, until the shoulder broke. Until he could not even carry, the shoulder that was carrying the cross, he fell down with it now. The shoulder broke. He collapsed. He was so shocked. In fact, until if you read, if you read Psalm 22, you see that he died more of shock than physical injury. He was so shocked at the amount of hate that these people had accumulated against him. How could you beat me like this? Until he wept. Beat until he fell down. You try to beat a dog right here in front of this gate like that, you'll be arrested. You understand me? Because there are laws protecting dogs. But there was no law to protect the Messiah. They beat him so horrendously until now we, have never, we can never perceive. We have never been able to perceive the depth of the suffering of the Christ. That is the blood that is symbolic of the red cloth. The blood he poured for you. Hallelujah. How could you go to sexual sin if you really perceive the suffering of the Christ? How could you choose me, 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 self, me, me, me? I want to be happy. You know me, I want to be me, me, your feelings. Jesus never chose his feelings on that day. But he felt towards you. Hallelujah. It is time to mature up. And he does this. Say, so look what I did for you. That's the first thing he shows you. So you may see. But when he looks at the wounds and the scars, then he asks, but where is the church that I purchased? Where is the church that I purchased? They are busy doing comedy, the pastors. Hmm? Preaching and the more funny you are, the better, the more anointed probably they think, right? Hmm. People like him. Women laugh, they love that church, they go there. Isn't it? The more comical you are, the more you have more people, the more money you gather. Right? How can we say this is the temple of the Lord? The temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. And yet, God is not here. He's asking, where is that church that I so much suffered for? The wounds I see, the scars I can see. But where is that church? They have joined politics. In Rwanda,